Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 24. Instead, we're returning with two big games with our cherries as we face Spurs away in the third game of our Europa Conference League league stage as well. Before we get to the games though, Shabu, we're getting on off camera. And thank the Lord it has picked up in the run off camera. Yes, yeah, so an abysmal start to the season for the Cherries. We finally turned the corner. Of course, in the last episode, we were our 6-3 loss away against Brighton and a 2-2 draw against Rapid Vienna at home in our first ever Europa Conference League league stage game. Uh, so, yeah, uh, five games off camera, uh, three in the league, one in the Carabao Cup and one in the Europa Conference League and three wins in the Premier League, starting off with our first two here. Uh, we began with two to win at home to Wolves where he scored two goals in two minutes. Uh, Martin Batarina scored our first lovely free ball by Alex Scott and then converted by the Croatian and then he set up Luca Romero uh, for his I think second goal of the season at this point to make it 2-0 and then following that a 2-0 win away at Villa Park against Aston Villa. Uh, Luca Romero two goals in two made it 1-0 and gave us the lead uh, and then five minutes later Batterina again so yep two of our best players start the season off there combining once again in a 2-0 win but following that we did have a loss to Maccabi Tel Aviv, the Israeli side, in the second game of our Europa Conference League league stage. Whilst, thankfully, in the Premier League, we picked it up. In Europe, we're still searching for our first win. Yep, lost the game by a goal. We should have won it. We dominated. Hit the bar three times. No exaggeration. Hit the bar three times in the game. But in the end, lost by a goal to nil. But, thankfully, did respond on the weekend. Two and a win at home to Everton. Max Ahrens! No income tax. No VAT. Signed for Bournemouth on a free. Yep, Max Aaron's got his first goal for the club buzzing with that great build up as well building from the back all the way from Georgie and uh, Max Aaron's converting from close range for his first goal in a cherry shirt and then Dominic Solanke uh, ended his mini goal drought uh, if you will scoring with 15 minutes to go in a 2-0 victory and our final game off camera was a 3-2 win over Cheltenham Town the EFL side in the EFL Cup 4th round we are through to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup but you'll see the draw pits us away again against Newcastle. I don't think we'll be getting through that. So, yep, our three wins in the Premier League on the trot, all by the same scoreline, 2-0, and our four on the ball for the season. We've definitely picked it up. Yep, really, really poor start to the season, where for a very brief period of time, we were actually bottom it says 19th there but it was actually yeah right before we had the uh the win over walls we did slip to bottom but thankfully we've risen since then and now we're into the top 10 so there's obviously a long way to go so can't take anything for granted but thank god after an abysmal absolutely abysmal start to the season three wins on the chart has now seen us get out of the red zone also um i just want manager of the month so, just want to uh, just want to point that out. Just want to point that out. Isn't it like hilarious and ironic that in the worst start to the season of the save, I win my first ever manager of the month. This is my first. This is my first manager of the month. I hadn't won it before until that month where we won three on the bounce, two nil each game. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But to be fair, I was the only manager that got three wins in a row there. So there you go. Right, um, heading into the game. Uh, Trill briefly, Europa Conference League right now, as you can see. Because we just got a one point from six, we're outside of the playoff or play-in uh, places, if you will. This is just, like, this like of, of all the things that, that need, uh, you know, an update or a, uh, a modernization in football... The Champions League and the Europa League, and I suppose now the Europa Conference League, is not one UEFA. There was nothing wrong with it. Anyway, heading into the game, uh, this will be our team who's taking on Spurs away from home right now in a Europa Conference League spot themselves, and this will be our team. Uh, in the run of camera, I've been using our 4 3 3 Gigan Press for I think all of our games, and so far it's wielded better results. So we'll leave things as they are for now. Uh, on the injury report right now, just a one player down, Danny Ings once again. He's already had two, uh, well not big injuries, but two mid injuries if you will. First to sprain knee ligaments back in that Europa Conference League playoff game and a hamstring strain as well. I've, I've got a feeling he's going to be injured for most of the season, you know, based on this start. Everyone else is fine and this is our team. So Georgie between the sticks, back for his Kelly, Metham, Gaza and Aaron's great little run for Dave, uh, David Gaza by the way. Three games in a row, keeping a clean sheet in the back. Uh, midfield trio is Scott McTominay and Batarina with Traore on the left, Romero on the right and Solanke leading our line. On the bench, Travers, Zabani, Pereira, Nandez, Blanco, Cook, Radilovic, Tavernier and Anthony uh, as well. So first of two games, it's Spurs away. Can we keep our winning run going? Not too sure about that. I'll take a point. Come with you, Charis. 
Yeah, both and Spurs had poor starts of the season, but in the last five games, we've kind of turned around. I say the last five games, last three games for us, but Spurs haven't lost in their last five, I believe now. So, yeah, both teams have recovered after poor starts. Question is, who is going to come out on top in this one? I'd definitely take a point. We're still not at that stage yet where we can go away against one of the traditional big six and target wins. So a point for me is a good result if we can get it. But... I mean, to be fair, we actually have a really decent record against the big six. What a ball, Batarina, and Traore just couldn't finish. Flag was up anyway. Said in the last episode, man, this guy's vision and creativity is on another level. Luca Romero to Max Ahrens, finally got his first goal for the club. Storming down the right-hand side, and there's Batarina back to Alex Scott. And now Aaron's to the Croatian, dispossessed though. And Spurs can lead a quick counter-attack here. But Mefum says, no, that's mine. Solanke, 1-2 of Traore going through. Can he shoot? He can! Hamid Traore, great start this season. Fifth of the year, Bournemouth in front. That's Mefum with a big interception on Bentecourt there. Great little 1-2 between Traore and Solanke. As Hamid gets in behind his man. And it's a really good finish past the Ukrainian as well. Okay, you know, I said we do actually have a really decent record against the big six. So, leading by a goal. And this isn't just me that's noticed this as well. Like, I've seen some of you guys comment and tweet me as well saying that against the big six in the Premier League or, or really just underdog games, you know, you, you've picked it up. And, and so have I, to be fair. Like, so have my teams. As Dan Juma has just wired the post as the former Cherry almost got Spurs back on level terms. I am noticing that when I do play against the big six team, I often do pull out a result. I wouldn't say more often than not, but more often than I'd expect. 1-0 at the break, what a result this would be. You might be winning, but that could all still change. Your performance levels drop. Don't let that happen. Can I just say one thing as well that I'm noticing in FM these days a lot more is that when I praise a team at the break, say we're like leading like 2 or 3-0 or whatever, and if I praise my team at the break, we don't capitulate anymore. I've noticed that in this save, like in, in previous versions of FM, you know, for anyone that's played FM for a while, you'll know this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. When you're winning like 2 or 3 nil, and you say, well done lads, keep it going at half time. In the second half, you ship like 2 or 3 goals in the first 20 minutes. But I don't notice that as much nowadays, so I'm not as reluctant to praise the team when we're playing one at the break. But as we lead by a goal here, I do expect Spurs to score at some point here. They've been in great form recently. They've got an amazing attack. I'm sure they're going to find a leveller. Here's Falan Mendy. Skips past Luca Romero. And it should have been there. Kulisevsky to Swede fires wide. 28 minutes to go. Still up by one. I think I might take off Romero because he's got Falan Mendy to deal with. And Dan Juma as well. Two quick players and he's on a booking. So I'm going to take him off now just in case. So I'm going to bring on Tav for Romero. Trail's going to book him, and I'll keep him on for now, and I might take off Alex Scott for Lewis Cook as well, because I, I, I must say I really like Lewis Cook coming on to shore things up as our vice-captain, but still, no, not vice-captain anymore, is he? He's third captain now, but anyway, still leading by one, with 23 minutes to go. Max is storming down the right, he's done really well there, and he's played into Batarina, and... McTominay! Bournemouth lead by two for the fourth game in a row. Scott McTominay, now vice-captain. He, he's he got his second goal of the game. and uh, Sorry, his second goal of the season and our second goal of the game. He, he scores big goals for me, Scott McTominay. He, he scored our last second leveller against West Ham. When he does score, which is quite rare, it's normally in a big game. I love McTominay, man. Again, I made him vice-captain at the start of the season. I love him. I'm so pleased I bit the bullet. For what was at the time our most expensive sign of savings. To be fair, I think it still is as well. But it looks still we're going to win this one away in North London. That's a great ball by Kenny Trail to chase onto, which Scriniar wins it back. But Spurs aren't dead and buried just yet. But they need a goal like yesterday. Udogi through the gap straight to Max Ahrens. And we'll win it back and send it long. Tav off the bench. Cross fields. Scriniar heads clear. But Kelly flicks back on. Traore, who scored our first, looking for our third. Instead, it's Solanke. 3-0 Bournemouth. We've totally turned it round. Sorry, I just want to see that on the replay, though, because I thought Traore shot that. I want to see that on the replay. Did he shoot? I thought he shot. He did. It took a deflection. And Solanke turns it over from close range. He'll claim the assist, though. Bournemouth, 3 it up in North London. What a win. No income tax, no VAT. Signed for Bournemouth on a free. Flack away, rich or poor. Max Aaron's tell us to score. Free, I'm, bu mate, I'm buzzing, like seriously. 
absolutely buzzing. And to be fair, I said it in the last episode, like, you know, four minutes, this is a great build up here. Oh, Jay Nanford in Mega 4, what a save that was by Truman. That could have and should have been four. We're, we're absolutely going for the kill in this game. Here. This is incredible. But I said it in the last episode, like, every team is going to go in bad form at some point. You just don't know when it's going to happen. And that's the thing, you know, Nand is over the top, so I'm going to make it four, puts it just wide. You just don't know when it's going to happen. Like, even if you're one of the big boys, even if you're like a, a title contender, at some point in the season, like, you know, you, you probably will have a game of, you know, have a few games in a row where you lose consecutively or you fail to win consecutively, even if you're one of the best teams in the league, you know. And we're far from one of the best teams in the league. We're not in a top six team yet. So it's going to happen at some point. It just happened earlier than we expected this year. But I'm saying to the boys here, my stretched out arms, I'm proud of performance out there. Nobody gave a chance, but you, uh, nobody gave us a chance today. Well done. But 3-0 to the final score. What a fantastic win. Four on the trot in the league and four clean sheets in a row. For Georgie, second year in a row, he's had a tough start to the season, but turned it round. Fair play. I've seen some people have unbeaten seasons in Football Manager, like an unbeaten, invincible league season, but I've never seen someone win 38 times out of 38. Hey, state-of-the-art training facilities now for Bournemouth. No, it's superb. Ah, oh, there's, one, there's one more to go. We've gone from excellent to superb, and then there's state-of-the-art. Okay, well, board... I've been raising our money. You, 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 you better, you better keep on giving me what I want, which is, which is better facilities. Oh, I can't do it yet. Oh yay, yay! David goals. He's just got his first call up to the Mexico squad. Oh my god, I'm such a nerd. But before any of you take the piss, I know, I know, some of you guys out there are like this as well. Don't lie. When, when your, you know, new gen, regen, wonder kid youngster gets his first international call up, I know you guys feel the same way I do right now. It's a nice, proud moment. He deserves it as well. Four games in the league in a row. He's kept clean sheets and all of them alongside Metham. He deserves it. He deserves it. I'm in his favoured personnel. He deserves it. Go on, David. Right then, let's go. Uh, final game of this episode, second and final one. It is indeed Zhirinsky away in Bosnia. And after no wins in our first two Europa Conference League games, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against saying if we don't win this game, we probably won't be qualifying for the knockout stage. So we really need to win this one. So heading into the game, uh, still with the 4-3-3, but loads of changes because right now, like the Premier League is my main priority. Poor, poor start. We need to turn it around if we're going to stay in the top 10 for this year as well. I might make one last second change here though. Um, I kind of want the captain in for this one, captain's influence. So I know that Kelly's got heavy match load, but I'm going to pop him in Fernandez and swap he and Aaron's around last minute. So, yep, uh, heading into the game, uh, this will be our team... Yep, uh, we've got uh, Georgian Gull, back for us, Kelly, Zabani, Pereira and Aaron's Midfield trio is now Cook, Blanco and Radilovic, the Serbian, who's developing really, really nicely. Already two goals this season, both coming from the spot in the Carabao Cup. But even so, uh, Anthony on the left, Romero on the right. He's developing quite nicely as well after a decent start. And up top, it is indeed Dominic Solanke. Uh, on the bench, Travers, Metham, Garza, Milanovic, Nandez, McTominay, Forsby, Scott Doyle, Traore, Tavernier... And Brooks as well. It's a, it's a big old bench star. So second and final game. Looking for our first win in the European Conference League league stage. We need it as well. Come on, you cherries. Yes, we felt we were super unlucky in that game against Maccabee Tel Aviv. Though we dominated. We hit the bar three times. Three times in the game. And really unlucky not to win that game in the end. Didn't even get a point. I'm pretty sure our first win is going to come at some point. And I do expect it tonight from the boys. The sword out here. Max Aaron to Danilo Pereira. Sends it long. Romero's going to win that. Crosses one in. Solange heads home. 14 for the year already for Dom. 1-0 Bournemouth. I'm not going to try and deny it. I've been fielding rotated lineups in the Europa Conference League thus far. Um, and that's because the games come on Thursday night. And admittedly, the first two are at home. This one's away in Bosnia. But we all know about those European hangovers with the Premier League on the weekend. And because of our poor league start, I felt like I've had to, really. I feel like I've got to like sacrifice our first few games in the Europa Conference League to worry about getting our league form sorted. Now it is. Now we can take this competition a little bit more seriously. The players certainly are. Eight minutes in, could have been tuning it up. Ugh, my game's lagging a little bit. For those that ask what I play on, by the way, um, it's an iMac. And I know I'm going to get a few people rolling their eyes out there, but I've, I've been using a Mac since I was about 16, 17 years old. And I just, I, I'm just, what can I say? I just use Macs nowadays. I prefer it. But um, 
it, it does lag a bit, I'm not going to lie. Great counter from Bournemouth though here. Solanke's through. It's, oh, it should have been two. I tell you what, that Europa Conference League ball, someone needs to get a knife out, cut it open and rip that fucking magnet out because we are constantly hitting the woodwork in this competition. What I really want is like a super computer. Do you know what I mean? Like a super iMac. Seriously, like it's so, it's so nerdy, but like I, I want like a super iMac, like a super powerful computer in order to play football manager. <laughs> So I can have the kits. I've got the uh, the the face packs, but I just I, I just want to have the best graphics because these are poor graphics. For those who don't play this game, these are these are poor graphics. Like FM's graphics, they're not they're not the best, but they they are a lot better than this ordinarily. But this is the best setting I can play on because my Mac isn't really set up for gaming. But Luca Romero, he's had a great start to the season. Another goal for him, two 0 born. This this should be our first win in the Europa Conference League, and long overdue as well. Oh, this game's going to be over at some point. Like, we are literally dominating right now. Um, I'm already thinking of the break. Take the starters off. Jay Nanfin down the left-hand side. Rolls through Solanke. There's Romero. There's the third. I might do it now. We've got Southampton. Oh, it's offside. We've got Southampton on the weekend. I might as well take the starters off now. We're dominating. Well, the Bosnians, to be fair, aren't done yet. I've taken off Solanke and Romero. But if we get a third goal, that will surely do it. Uh, with most of our starters rested for the game on Saturday against Southampton. This, this is the time now for more if I feel. Like we're finally starting to get confidence, finally starting to string wins together. This is our first win in the Europa Conference League. If we can if we can keep this up, then we won't look back, I feel. Max down the right, whips one into the middle. Oh, Force be so close to his first goal and a save. Game not done yet, and Oh, wow. Okay. All right. The clean sheet's gone there. Bosnians get one back. But there's only a minute to go. Follows in his own miss. Surely we're not going to throw this away. Surely not. Two minutes of stoppage time. Oh, my God. I mean, I've, I've taken the starters off because I felt as though we were in complete control. If we bottle this, I mean, seriously, we, we don't deserve to qualify for the knockout rounds. This is embarrassing, lads. Take charge of that Pereira. Well done, mate. That's a great ball by Morton Forsby. Tav to wrap it up. Loses it. Lads, come on. Seriously. Surely we're not going to throw this away. Radilovic. Oh, great ball. Tav. Off the post. But that will surely do it now. 17 seconds to go. That will that'll surely do it now. Well, it was looking as though it was going to be a very convincing win. In the end, we're uh, we're going to win it by a single goal. But you know what? Doesn't matter how you do it. So long as you do our first win in the league stage, the Europa Conference League, and I'll take it. Game of two halves, really. Dominated the first, very poor in the second. But we'll have it. We'll have it. Two on the final score, and finally we get three points, and that'll move us in to a playoff round. So basically, um, for those that aren't aware of what it means, this uh, this new sort of like uh, remodeling. Uh, of the uh, the group stage, if you will. Um, basically, in the uh, green, you have buys. This takes you straight through to the round of 16. And in the blue, this will put you into a playoff. So if you take a look at the rules here, it will show you clearly. So yeah, the first day, I mean, you guarantee a place into the round of 16. And then from 9th down to 24th, it's a playoff round. I don't know how the playoff round is sorted. I assume it's just a, a draw. It's not like, I don't think it's seeding like it is in, you know, the NBA for example, the NBA players. I think it's just a draw. Um, but even so, that's that's how it's currently modelled now uh, since the change has been made. Right, guys, that will do it for today's episode of the FM Save. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had to please drop a like. Stop to you all have a fantastic day. The Cherries have finally sorted out after a tough start to the season. I'll return in the very next episode with games against. I... I can't see us getting through that Carabao quarterfinal. But there is a chance to reach our first ever semi in the save, so I might just play it. But we're definitely going to play the final Europa Conference League phase, league stage game, because uh, obviously qualification may be on the line. And maybe Arsenal away. I don't know. Either these two or these two. I guess we'll see in the next episode. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I will see you for the next episode of the FM series. Very soon.